Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazad of Chess Channel and welcome back to our Commodore Chess Games Played by Computer series. So in this series we're following some great games that have been played by top engines in the TCEC competition, Computer Chess Championships or uh, on the official Computer Chess Rating List website, the popular CCRL. And today I prepared a really a beautiful, amazing game played by Stockfish 16 against another top engine revenge in the Austrian attack of the Perks defense. And I myself, I like you to go into the 150 attack against the Perks defense. If you are interested into this opening theory, into this opening lines, please check out my 150 attack studies. But the Austrian attack that you see now also against the Perks defense is in my opinion perfectly fine. Uh, in my opinion, if you don't want to learn too much theory, then you should even study the Austrian attack because the Austrian attack, I think, is not so spread like the 150 attack. In the 150 attack, I think Black has more ideas, more counter attack possibilities. In the Austrian attack, I think the game is more directed to one particular line, to one particular uh, sideline. So, uh, as I said, if you don't want to maybe learn too much theory, study the Austrian attack and start with this game because I think here Stoffer 16 played an amazing, a brutal, a perfect, perfect and immortal uh, Austrian attack against the Perth's defense. So, let's see now the game with the white pieces. The fish opened with the move E4. Here the revenge response was D6, the Perth's defense. D4 grabbed Grabbing the center, knight to f6, hitting the pawn, and of course, here protecting simply the pawn on e4. We have now the move g6, normal development, and now comes the Austrian attack move f4. So, as I said, in my opinion, one of the best approaches is also to go into the 150 attack, bishop to g7, bishop to e3, queen to uh, d2, then trade off the bishops, launch flank attack, h4, h5. So, in my opinion, it's also really, really a beautiful attack. But as I said, if you don't want to study too much theory, go into the Austrian attack because there's not so much that black can do actually black has to of course develop here with bishop to g7 knight to f3 and after move kingside casting basically you see white is choosing now the sideline in some other uh, attacks against the Perth defense like in the 150 attack many times black has the flexibility maybe to go with a uh, a6 with c6 uh, with his early e5 so black has a certain flexibility and then have you have to learn what will do when, when he plays a6, what will do when he plays c6, what will do uh, when he plays e5. So I think now uh, black is a little bit squeezed in his opportunities with the black pieces. Now white is, as I said, uh, choosing the sideline now and basically many things you can do. You can play the Kuraitsa variation with the move bishop to e3. If knight to g4 happens, you have still bishop to g1. You can also play this uh, here Unsicker attack, which is a very aggressive method, leads although into complications also for white it's i think sometimes too aggressive method and here in my opinion the best way is now this vice variation uh, with the move bishop to d3 simply uh supporting in our now powerful center that we have because we have to say it we have two knights on most natural scores we have powerful center and now we're supporting the center the e5 move that we are trying to play we can play it always but i think this move bishop to d3 is a better approach because now we're just one move far away from casting now our king is sort of more secured if something clears in the center of the board so really really amazing opening theory so knight to a6 and here you can be tempted maybe to pick up um, the knight on a6 this is a very very often played line by black in this types of structures with the move knight to a6 uh, black is preparing now to move c5 if you play here bishop to a6 immediately then after b takes a6 and the uh, kingside casting rook to b8 black has i think his fun here on the b file with the rook the bishop is a little bit stuck on c1 so i would not recommend you here to immediately take out the knight you can again also do it in the later state of the game because here first we castle now after move c5 that uh, of course, uh, black will play now simply s playing against this powerful center that white created. Now, again, I would not recommend you to go with bishop to a6 because black has a beautiful, beautiful counterattack. Black can play immediately c takes d4. Now, if you retreat here with bishop to d3, then look at this d takes c3, b takes c3, queen to a5 comes into the game. This bishop gets active. So, of course, white doesn't have to play the game like this but still it's very very complicated for instance if you play here d takes c5 uh, also it's not so good then knight to c5 comes very very active into the game we have some attacks here around the score e4 the bishop is hanging on d3 so suddenly i think uh, the position is not so powerful 
all I would not say white made a mistake or something, but it's not the position that we want to get here with the white pieces. So after move c5, that's why Stockfish advanced simply uh, now the pawn on d5. We have bishop to g4, h3, bishop takes f3, and now rook to f3. Pooh, you can guess what will happen when Stockfish plays a rook lift. This rook will be always important, uh, of course, attacking the third rank defensively, of course, covering maybe some opportunities here on the b-file, but all, also offensively here attacking the g-file. So I really simply love when Stockfish plays a rook lift in the middle game stage. So rook to c8 with the preparation to play the move c4, and now finally Stockfish plays uh, bishop takes a6, b takes a6, because it's now a different story. It's now a more and more powerful setup here by white. Although in the beginning of this game, it seemed to me that black didn't do anything wrong. So far, it's perfectly fine. Still, this B, this B file attack is working maybe with the move queen to B6, but Stockfish is Stockfish. Stockfish has here really deeper, wilder, cooler ideas in mind because after rook to B1 that Stockfish first played, Stockfish wants, of course, to develop the dash for bishop somewhere. We have here queen to b6, bishop to e3, not allowing here maybe the move c4. c4, I think, would be very interesting for black. Then c4, knight to d7, and then knight to c5. When the knight comes on c5, then maybe bishop takes c3, followed with knight takes e4 is a threat. So it's a common plan it's a common maneuver of blacks not only in this types of position the person defense it, you can reach a similar uh, position also in the benoni in the benoni this maneuver c4 knight to d7 knight to c5 bishop to c3 and then knight takes e4 is a common tactical approach so here we have queen to b7 bishop to f2 knight to d7 with the preparation as i said c4 knight to c5 now we have king to h2 securing the king and now after rook to e8 now comes a very interesting move bishop to e one this move is uh, keeping here a nice grip around the square c3 what stockfish is trying to do is play of course much much more freely maybe with this rook moving the rook somewhere so so far the knight is a little bit overloaded here if something clears here if you move maybe the queen then after bishop to c3 if you don't have the bishop on c3 then you if you play with b takes c3 then the rook could be hanging on the b file so it's also something uh something that you should consider when you play here uh, the game with the white pieces and now the tactical battle starts so we have now really replacements or movements of the pieces so we have here uh positional ideas but now we have a tactical collision in the middle game here the revenge engine is trying to get some spaces play simply the move f5 you cannot play even e6 uh, here that's the issue i think in black's position you would love of course to compete against white's main strength in the position and it's of course the powerful d5 uh, pawn but e6 is never possible to look at this d takes e6 you have to play now rook to e6 in order to uh, still protect your pawn on d6 but now with f5 you're getting destroyed you can maybe deliver check nothing spectacular but the pawn on d6 will uh, will be lost eventually in one particular moment so after move bishop to e1 we have f5 as we said e takes f5 if you play here g takes f5 this is not good because queen to d3 uh, is going to happen attacking the pawn on f5 and look at this suddenly black has so many weaknesses uh g6 e6 f5 h5 even g5 is weak even the pawn on a6 is weak so these are obvious targets so in my opinion a devastating game for black so after e takes f5 rook to f5 but of course now we have this three versus two pawn majority attack as a possibility for white to create some dynamics g4 hits the rook rook that drops back and now queen to e2 we have here the common problem uh the weak square on e6 and what should you do here uh, uh the revenge engine simply continued with this plan c4 knight to c5 as promised but now stockfish plays an incredible brutal attack plays now simply rook to d1 because the queen is here attacking the pawn on b2 but it's also overloaded to the defense of the knight on d7 so here if you take for instance this wasn't played in the game but this is not possible you get simply this one uh, rook to uh, b1 uh, kicking with the queen after queen to a3 queen to e6 is simply winning the game is simply winning the piece the game is over here for sure so that's why after rook to d1 knight to c5 was first placed and now bishop to uh, f2 simply here hitting uh, the knight on c5 now we have queen takes b2 and now bishop to c5 let's see opportunities what happens if you for instance play d takes c5 this was not also played in the game but it's a very interesting line but actually this is not good because of this sequence rook to b1 again you have to drop back with the queen after queen to c4 and bishop to c3 probably 
uh, black would love now to simplify the game by trading off more pieces actually white doesn't have to even react white can play immediately a stunning d6 uh discovered attack against the king you have to step back and now after d7 this pawn is wrong now we support the pawn and uh here in the next couple moves we will eventually get our uh piece back that's not the point but this passer here is simply something that uh, bothers black rook to c3 will happen also c5 very weak so uh even if this game reaches the fully end game here with this healthy pawn structure again white has great great winning chances so here after move bishop to c5 that's why bishop to c3 was played here not d takes c5 but now comes the stunner rook to c3 the exchange sacrifice after queen to c3 bishop to d4 and now stockfish uses this long diagonal basically the king is naked here also the problem is now uh, this attack on with the move queen to e6 so the queen will attack the uh, light squares the bishop is already attacking the dark squares so the king is naked from this point on the game becomes simply a one-way ticket in white's favor so we have queen to a3 f5 what should you do if you play g takes f5 this is not good then g takes f5 open simply the position you can maybe try to block it but look at this we deliver check then queen to g4 what are you going to do you lose this item material this is game over again for black so after move f5 we have g5 uh revenge is trying to keep the position blocked somehow here on the king side but now queen to d2 attacks the pawn we have rook to f6 if you play h6 then uh, queen to e2 as we said this is always always a problem if you play rook to f6 bishop to f6 e takes f6 it's not possible the rook is hanging so as I said, really messed up game here for black. So after queen to d2, rook to f6, we have queen to g5. The queen comes in a beautiful way into the game. Rook to f1, uh, queen to a4, attacking the pawn on c2. But Stockfish keeps everything glued together, compact. Bishop protects the rook. Bishop attacks also the rook on f6. So nothing uh, here what black can do. So queen to d7, revenge retreats. Rook to e2, and after actually after rook to c8, in this position revenge even resigns so what's the issue we can of course play let's see a primitive idea this is not the optimal way to play but let's see a sort of beginner's idea simply bishop takes f6 uh, trading the bishop for rook we take another pawn we take also another pawn uh, rook to d rook to e7 and in one moment we simply trade off more pieces with this pawn majority here this is again completely completely winning endgame here for for white so incredible austrian attack against the perch defense here by stock for 16 i really enjoyed this game as i said if you are bothered if you have problems trouble to meet uh the perch defense the austrian attack is really direct approach there's not so much that black can do and this vice variation with the move bishop t33 is really solid setup so maybe you can uh first of all study this game with different opportunities with different sidelines and then i think you can have a great preparation against an unpleasant opening like the perch defense so okay now uh, if you like this game please check out also our another uh come the chess games play by computers here's the link of our playlist we have downloaded and analyzed many many great games from the tcs in ccr and computer chess championships and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what do we say chess is the best of course